At Northrop Grumman, innovation isn't just an idea. It's a way of life. The value of performance. Northrop Grumman. Things happen unexpectedly, and that's what I do. I, uh, I collect things that are unexpected, things that have the quality that they make people laugh and then think. I'm going to begin by showing you a very short video. The guy who's standing up would lift his hand, and he has a bottle. He has a beer bottle. And he'll lift it up, and he will very slowly, do it from this side, very slowly smash it over the head of the man who's sitting down. They did some experiments. They are in Switzerland. They are scientists. They did some experiments to try to come up with the answer to the question, is it better to be hit over the head with a full bottle of beer or hit over the head with an empty bottle of beer? <laughs> Any guesses about this? Okay. okay, and think about why. Nobody knew. This question came up several times in court cases, in legal cases in Switzerland, and they needed to know the answer if they were going to decide whether to charge people with a terrible crime or a not so terrible crime. And so they did some experiments. They discovered that it's, first of all, it's not good to be hit over the head with a bottle of beer. <laughs> and second, that it's slightly better to be hit over the head with a full bottle. A full bottle will break a little more easily than an empty bottle. You can look up their paper. On our website, there's all kinds of information about all these things. So I'm going to talk about Improbable Research, which is my magazine. I brought some of them here. I've only got three, but if you want one afterwards and you want to fight a couple other people for them, come on up and the Ig Nobel Prizes, which are prizes we give for things like that. By improbable, I mean not what you expect. That's what my whole life has become about, and it's what I was looking for when I was a little kid, too. I always like things that are not what I expect, and things that are very intriguing, things I don't quite understand, but things that maybe if I ask enough questions and ask around, I'll, I'll be able to figure out, maybe. We give prizes every year, or things that have this quality. Uh, things, again, that make people laugh and then think. Things that are funny when you first see them, and then a week later, they're still rattling around in your head, and you just want to tell somebody about it. If you win a prize, you get an Ig Nobel Prize. It's not easy to win a prize. We get more than 9,000 nominations every year for Ig Nobel Prizes. We give 10 prizes. We offer them very quietly. You don't have to accept a prize. We get in touch with you if we choose you. If you choose to say no, that's fine. But most of the people to whom we offer a prize say yes. And if you win a prize, here's what you get. You get an Ig Nobel Prize. It's different every year. This is the one we gave out a few months ago. It's a nice frame under glass. There's a hammer inside it. And also inside, there's a, a piece of paper saying, in case of emergency, use hammer to break glass. You also win a piece of paper that says you've won an Ig Nobel Prize, and that piece of paper is signed by several people who have Nobel Prizes. It's a nice piece of paper. There's a tradition that many of the winners have. I found they take it home, they get it framed, and they hang it up above the toilet in their home. <laughs> also, this year, for the first time, we don't have any money, but we, we managed to give money to each of the winners. Each winner got a $10 trillion bill. <laughs> You may know that the country of Zimbabwe in Africa had terrible inflation for a few years, and they kept printing money in larger and larger amounts. And this is the highest, that's not the highest they got. The highest they got was printing a bill worth $10 trillion, uh, excuse me, $100 trillion, $100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars. And the man responsible for that won an Ig Nobel Prize in mathematics. He's the head of the National Bank there. There's a giant ceremony that happens every year at Harvard University up in Massachusetts. In this building, it's the biggest uh, meeting place at Harvard. It fits 1,100 people. This is what it looks like from the stage. It's always completely filled on Ig Nobel night. People come from around the world. We televise it live. You can see videos on the internet if you want. And up on the stage, waiting to hand the Ig Nobel Prizes to the Ig Nobel Prize winners are some Nobel Prize winners. 
This photo is from a couple of years ago. We had nine Nobel Prize winners on stage handing out the Ig Nobel, the Ig Nobel Prizes and some other people. Now, it's a ceremony. You've all had to sit through horrible things at school and other places where there are a lot of people giving speeches and you know what happens. Everybody talks too long. And we used to have this problem and then we solved it. We solved it by something we call Miss Sweetie Poo. Every year we recruit a really cute eight-year-old girl. She's got to be somebody special. She's got to be the kind of eight-year-old girl that has ice water in her veins. Nothing Nothing frightens her. She sits on the side of the stage. I introduce her at the start of the night so everyone can see what's going to happen. And I explain that whenever Miss Sweetie Pooh feels that somebody's talked long enough, she will let them know. <laughs> and I ask her to demonstrate. This little girl walks across the stage. She walks up to the person who's at the microphone. And she looks up at that person and she says, please stop. I'm bored. Please stop. I'm bored. Please stop. I'm bored. Please stop. I'm bored. She doesn't stop until they do. And it works. Here very quickly is a look at a few of the people who won Ig Nobel Prizes in the most recent ceremony. We gave an Ig Nobel Prize in medicine to a team from Japan, China, and uh, England for assessing the effects of listening to opera, for measuring the effects of listening to opera on heart transplant patients who are mice. <laughs> they published a paper, a report about this in a medical journal. Now, you may or may not have read medical reports and, and, and reports in science journals. This, is, of course, is how scientists talk to each other and, and report what they've done. They're usually long, very detailed things, and if you want to go read the details, you can. Here's the team at the ceremony getting their prize. The man on the right uh, is Roy Glauber, has a Nobel Prize in Physics. He's handing them the prize. We didn't expect that the team of Ig Nobel winners would show up wearing mouse costumes, <laughs> but they did. We also didn't expect that they came planning to sing their acceptance <laughs> speech. They sang some opera and until Miss Sweetie Pooh helped them finish early. <laughs> we gave a prize in the field of psychology this year. That prize went to a large team from several countries, an international team, France, USA, the UK, the Netherlands, Poland. They won for confirming by experiment that people who think they are drunk also think they are attractive. <laughs> This is the start of their report about this. That experiment, by the way, was done in France. So we, we don't know for certain that it works in America or in other countries. We only know that it works at least in some parts of France. And here's the team at the ceremony. At the moment, they're getting their Ig Nobel Prize. And we really didn't expect that two of our winners this year came planning to sing their acceptance speeches. And you can see Miss Sweetie Pooh there helping them out to finish. Before I explain the next prize, just want to make sure everybody knows what this is and familiar. It's a kind of beetle. Anybody know what kind? Just say it if you know. Right. It's a dung beetle. And what do dung beetles do? Right. They collect the dung from other animals and they roll it into a big ball. We gave a prize jointly in two fields, a joint prize in biology and astronomy. We've never given a prize in, in more than one field at a time. This prize in biology and astronomy went to a big team from Sweden, Australia, South Africa, Germany, and the UK. They won for discovering that when dung beetles get lost, they can navigate their way home by looking at the Milky Way. And well, I'm hearing somebody say you don't get it, and nobody gets it until you go and look at their report. They did some tests. And if you were going to test whether beetles could do that, give a thought about how would you go about testing whether that is true or not. And then go and look up their report on the internet and see how they did it. And here's part of the team who showed up at the ceremony with these big balls, which were not made of dung, I'm happy to report. We gave a prize in the field of safety engineering. Went to a man named Gustano Pizzo, 
in New York City, and he had died a few years earlier, but we got in touch with his family, and they were very happy he was getting a prize. He won for inventing a system, an electromechanical system, to trap airplane hijackers. So it's a system to trap airplane hijackers. This system, it drops the hijacker <laughs> through trap doors. Okay, if you're not sure what a trap door is, just ask the, the person next to you. It's, you know, it's, it's a door in the floor that opens up. So the system drops a hijacker through trap doors. Then it seals the hijacker into a package. This is automatically, this is the machine, sealing the hijacker into a package. Then it drops this packaged hijacker through the airplane's specially installed bomb bay doors, that's bigger trap doors on the bottom of the whole airplane. And it now the, this, this packaged hijacker is parachuted down to earth where police, who were alerted by radio, are waiting to greet him. And Mr. Pizzo has a patent. And you can look up the patent and you can download a copy of Mr. Pizzo's patent if you want. And you can look at it and, and decide for yourself whether you think this is a good idea and a workable idea. Um, it's not yet installed on any major airline. Okay, we think that part of the reason is because it's very expensive to install this. The Ig Nobel Physics Prize went to a large team from Italy, Russia, several other countries. They won for discovering that some people would be physically capable of running across the surface of a pond. These people would be capable of running across water, across the surface of a pond, if those people and that pond were on the moon. <laughs> Here's their report called Humans Running in Place on Water on simulated, at Simulated Reduced Gravity. What they were trying to figure out was, you know how strong gravity is, is here, you know, at the surface. It's pulling you onto your chair. It's pulling me onto the, the surface here. If the gravity here were not so strong, how, how weak would it have to be before you could run on top of the surface of water without sinking? So they, they did some calculations, and then they did some experiments. We have a video which shows you one of their experiments. So you can see the man dangling from the ceiling and running on the water there. Here's part of the team at the Ig Nobel ceremony getting their prize, and you can see Miss Sweetie Pooh has heard enough of the story. We gave a prize in archaeology, and the archaeology prize went to a couple of scientists from Canada and the U.S. They won for parboiling a dead shrew. A shrew is a small animal very much like a mouse. It's very common, although people don't often notice them. Parboiling means it was boiled just for a couple of minutes to kill the bacteria. So they parboiled a dead shrew, and then they swallowed the shrew, swallowed the whole shrew in pieces, being careful not to chew it. They did not chew it. So they, they parboiled the shrew, swallowed it entirely without chewing. Then they carefully examined everything that came out the person's other end over the next few days. They did this all so they could see which bones would dissolve inside the digestive system and which bones would not. And they got a surprise. And I won't tell you what the surprise is. You can go look it up if you're curious. That's their report. You can read it on the internet. And this is Brian Crandall, one of the scientists at the moment that we introduced him on stage at the ceremony. And we gave an Ig Nobel Prize in probability and chance to a team from Europe. They won for making two, two related discoveries. First, that the longer a cow has been lying down, the more likely that cow will soon stand up. <laughs> and second, that once a cow stands up, you cannot easily predict how soon that cow will lie down. Here's their report called, Are Cows More Likely to Lie Down the Longer? They stand. And this is a picture of the, the scientists sent us this picture of them doing their research. And here's one of them at the Ig Nobel ceremony finishing his speech. Um, a, just a very quick look at two past winners. This is Gillian Clark. Ten years ago, Gillian Clark won an Ig Nobel Prize. She was at the time a high school student in Chicago. So Gillian Clark, high school student in Chicago, won an Ig Nobel Prize for testing 
the first good test of what's known as the five second rule. You probably know the five second rule. It's the idea that if you drop a piece of food on the floor, maybe it's okay to eat it if it's only been there for less than five seconds. And nobody had tested that. She did in a biology lab. And we gave her an Ig Nobel Prize. A few years later, oh, after that, we got letters from around the world, from biologists, from famous biologists. They were angry. They were saying, I was planning to do this later in my career when I got time. <laughs> and now this high school girl has scooped us. And uh, there, a new report just came out in, by some British scientists just a month ago confirming her results. So, and the last thing I wanted to show you is this is Andre Geim in the year 2000, who that year was awarded the Ig Nobel Prize in physics because he and another scientist, they both won the prize, used magnets, magnets, they used magnets to levitate a frog. Right. 10 years after that, the same person, Andre Geim, was awarded a Nobel Prize in physics for something different. So anyway, um, that's everything I've come to tell you, and thank you.